Whilst my time with Bagshaws spans only about a third of the 150 years that we have been established, there cannot have been many stranger times than those that we are experiencing at the moment. Apart from the two world wars and perhaps the Spanish flu epidemic of 1919, which was just before my time, we have never had such an odd set of rules in place in order to keep the market running. We are very fortunate that DEFRA has recognised the vital role of auction markets in setting prices and maintaining orderly marketing. At the moment, in the second period of lockdown, we are operating a drop-and-go system, which means that the only people within the market itself are dedicated buyers and Bagshaw staff. This means that there are no farmers present to see their stock sold, and they really have to put their trust in our auctioneers to do their best. All this goes very much against the grain. Auctioneers have always done their best to assemble a crowd. Markets are busy, bustling places which attract not just buyers and sellers, but all manner of other interested parties who swell the crowd and add to the atmosphere. At present, that's the last thing we want. We're trying to maintain the maximum throughput of stock with the minimum number of people on site. And I am very aware that coming to market is something that many hold very dear. Since when have auctioneers ever had to worry about too many people attending a sale? But that's the situation today. In fact, I have had the unpleasant task of evicting several onlookers this morning. And so, another casualty of the pandemic is the Bakewell Market Carol Service, an event that has in normal years brought so many together, and for me has always marked the start of Christmas. Alan is doing his best to provide a virtual substitute, albeit without the hog roast and mince pies. We mustn't forget that all these measures are in place to reduce risk and ensure that we can, when circumstances improve, gather together once again. As I mentioned earlier, next year marks a century and a half since Bagshaws was established. Let us, though, let us hope that we are able to celebrate Christmas 2021 in style. Good afternoon everybody, a warm welcome to the virtual High Peak Livestock Society Carol Service. Uh, it'd be lovely to be in the room with you today but obviously circumstances dictate that I can't be so I hope you have a fantastic afternoon with you and as Chairman of the Society I welcome you to the Carol Service. Thank you very much. Thank you Alistair and James. My name is Alan Griggs and I'm the lead rural chaplain here in Derbyshire and I'm at Mark Lowe and Ruth Lowe's farm in Hume End near Hartington, a beautiful place. As you heard, we normally meet in the main storing at the Bakewell Livestock Market, but this year, of course, is going to be very different. Yet our hope is that this pre-recorded service will help to bring us together and prepare us for the coming of Christ. We have a wide variety of people involved in the service and there are some wonderful landscape pictures which you will see throughout the service of worship. We live in a beautiful county, so let's worship and thank God for the greatest gift to us all, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, here in Derbyshire, on farm and in field. Let's pray. Shepherding God, guide us through this season of anticipation and hope. Comfort our troubled minds and strengthen our tired bodies. Restore the hope this season offers that we might lift our voices with strength and joy. Straighten the crooked paths that we might walk in your ways. Level the rocky ground that we might prepare for your arrival in our world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
chapter 9 The people walking in darkness have seen a great light On those living in the land of the shadow of death A light has down for those for to use a child is born To us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders And he will be called a wonderful counsellor Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time of the and forever the zeal of the lord almighty will accomplish this
reading from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary unto fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. <laughs> Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a, 
to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king as his ancestor David was and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. At that time of year, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Coinerus was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in, in Judea the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of, of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, 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 pregnant at the time. And while they were in Bethlehem, they came for, for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son 
wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. There were some shepherds in that time, part of the country, <coughs> who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. <coughs> This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angels singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back to he into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go into Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them of the, what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been so, just as the angels had told them. forget Christmas. Well this year's been very different and things might seem a bit sad. 
What we COVID, lockdown and furlough, times have been bad. Yet for farmers and growers, life in isolation is nothing much new. And luckily you never get bored, because there's always something to do. Of course we've all got to be sensible and keep well apart. But hasn't it been boring without Bakewell's Monday Mart? To meet up with friends and relations, see buyers and sellers, and catch up with old gossip from them as can't wait for tellers. We've been asked many times, be careful and not spread disease. Wash hands, cover face, and two metres apart, please. Well, for some farmers' partners, them rules have been welcome news, as coronavirus has perhaps put paid to them conjugal dues. We're all worried and suffering, and religiously wearing our mask. But how can farmers sanitise a slurry pit, don't even ask? There's no point in telling milk cows about this new killer plague. They're still terrified at TB, that's why they're all looking vague. And yet life on most farms hasn't really been that very different. Bills still arrive, though sunsets and dawns have been magnificent. Some seasons help, some ender, and your livestock will still get out. Some crops flourish, some falter, or it's flood, or it's drought. Apparently, even thikers are now taking proper precautions. They're carrying recyclable bags for them little misfortunes. And having used them, the non-living litter are making a fuss, but take them back home with them on peak Pathfinder bus. Sadly, all oh, them new students at uni have to keep you there bubble, and if caught drinking anything called Corona, they're really in trouble. But there are some advantages, as some of them have said, what with that government ruling of only six to one bed. But you've got to feel sorry for all the businesses, factories and bars, and people non-seen families with mortgages and fancy new cars. All high street shops are dying, and there now seems no way to save that old custom, because Amazon rules, OK. And so we at war, we a virus we can not even see. It's spread right around the world, affecting all, you and me. But those, these are strange days, and there's still somewhat to fear. Let's pause and remember that this is a special time of year. Now a similar tale I'll tell you of a time many centuries ago, in a land far away, when people were troubled and spirits were low. When Caesar Augustus had his foot stamped on necks at Jews, and Angel Gabriel told a young lass of her pregnancy news. Two folk, we an ass, went to Bethlehem to get tested and tracked. Yet all things were shut, and Mary says, Hey Joe, I'm right knacked. I think baby's perhaps coming, we better be ready and able. But Joe says, the only place I can find is a little old stable. We half manage, says Mary. Livestock will keep us all warm. I should think tech God'll take care of us, and we'll weather the storm. That very night, as the prophets foretold, baby Jesus were born, and since then we've been carolling on each and every Christmas morn. That dawn, some shepherds were tending the flocks upon banks, when the angels appeared to them and told them to go and give thanks. Next come three wise men who followed a wandering star. They bought rare gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh in a jar. So at Christmas remember the real reason for the presents we give is God's gift of a holy child to us in whose ways we should live. And so these times are not easy. Just be strong and don't fear. I wish you all happy Christmas and a peaceful new year. Matthew 2 verses 1 to 15. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? We have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where this Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, 
are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For you, from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go also and pay him home. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star as they had seen it at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary its mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son.
This reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Here endeth the lesson. Before our reflection, I want to acknowledge the recent and devastating fire at Mackworth Village Church near Derby. As with so many of our churches, there are deep connections which span the generations. Yet, even in the devastation and darkness, God speaks. The vicar in charge of All Saints, Reverend Jacqueline Stober, explained to me that as she watched the firefighters bravely tackle the flames, one light remained on over the porch door of the church until the very end. By coincidence, I recorded my sermon in the doorway of Mackworth Church, and little did I know that the church building would be destroyed just a week later. So as you listen to this reflection filmed in the beautiful doorway of Mackworth Church, hold Reverend Jacqueline, the congregation, and Mackworth Village community in your prayers, as we hold on to hope through the light of Jesus Christ. I hope you've enjoyed this farmer's carol service so far. Christmas is a journey to find Jesus Christ and Advent prepares us to meet with God. Yet in this extraordinary year, the journey seems much more challenging and we're not quite sure how to prepare perhaps. And I wonder how your journeys have changed because of the pandemic. Maybe some of your journeys have been to buy shopping or a prescription for people in the community. Small everyday acts of kindness which help our communities to remain strong and resilient. For farmers, 
journeys to the livestock market have thankfully continued, despite the market feeling a bit more like a drive-through, with attempts by farmers to order a sandwich or a coffee from the market drovers, and then getting back to the farm to nervously watch their animals sold on the computer screen. So a big thank you to the staff at Bagshaws for keeping the show on the road as a vital part of the rural community. And perhaps for many farmers the daily journeys and routines have been very much the same as farmers remain firmly committed to producing food and caring and tending for the land. In fact I have heard so many farmers this year tell me how much they appreciate where they live. There is so much to be thankful for isn't there? Right under our feet. And there have been thousands more journeys into the countryside this year. People appreciating the beauty of Derbyshire captured in the many wonderful photos that we have included in this service. And with thanks to Sophie Wilson Photography, Margaret Bagshaw, Rachel Metcalf from the Farming Life Centre and Carol and David Platts for sending in their photos. Let's be proud of Derbyshire and treat this beautiful county and the land with respect and care. Recognising that our countryside is both a place of work and leisure. And let's not forget the journeys of grief that many have had to take this Christmas and every Christmas as they remember loved ones. And we remember those feeling isolated and alone and we think of those grieving life as we knew it before the pandemic. And let's also remember those caring for others in hospitals, care homes, schools, charities and in our churches and so many other places. So many will approach Christmas feeling exhausted this year and we pray that they will be restored and find some rest. Yet we thank God that this Christmas renews our hope in the midst of our anxieties and worries and uncertainty. And that hope is beginning to rise, isn't it, as we hear of progress with vaccines and a pathway through this pandemic. Jesus Christ was born in a small rural village surrounded by the noise and smells of livestock and in the midst of a crushing Roman occupation times were tough and life also very uncertain. Some like the Magi and the shepherds journey to search for the one born King of the Jews to see God revealed with their very own eyes. Anything less would just not do. In other words, Zoom just wouldn't cut it on this occasion. There really is no substitute for seeing those that we love face to face. And the prophet Isaiah foresees this wonderful sight saying, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. At Christmas, the light dawns and overcomes deep darkness, the unbreakable promise of God. Yet, Christmas will be very different this year. So let's thank God though, that the gift of Jesus Christ remains steadfast. And let's be thankful for what we have. Thankful for family and friends and our communities and this beautiful county of Derbyshire. Perhaps this Christmas, the call in this pandemic year is to find Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, right under our feet, on farm, in field and in our communities. And so as we continue to travel together, to journey together, the Derbyshire Rural Chaplaincy pray that through the hope of Jesus Christ, you may know the peace, comfort, hope and joy that this Christmas season brings. We come to that point of the service where we would normally take an offering. And when we gather for the carol service at Bakewell Livestock Market, we normally raise well over £1,000 for good causes. 
And so we're asking you this year to donate to two charities supported by the High Peak Livestock Society for 2020. The first is the amazing and crucial work of the Derbyshire, Leicestershire and Rutland Air Ambulance, which is so important to isolated rural and farming communities. The second is the Derbyshire Rural Chaplaincy's Welfare Fund, which offers small grants of up to £200 to farmers in Derbyshire aimed at supporting their well-being. You can donate through the websites by going, first of all, to the airambulanceservice.org.uk and for the Derbyshire Rural Chaplaincy Welfare Fund, go to ruralactionderbyshire.org.uk and when you donate, mention the carol service. <laughs> good to bring this online carol service together and I want to thank those that have helped to make it all happen Claire Delahaye, Bel Canto and St Anne's Church Choir, Yorgrave Brass Band, Katie Heelin for conducting, Judith Orchard and Helen Neller 
and in particular their youngest member Tom Horton at 13 and their eldest member Albert Turner at 95. Thank you to them. For Alistair and James and for the readers, John, Jenny, Margaret, David, Fiona and Norman. For the wonderful poetry again brought to us by Philip Holland. And if you would like a copy of Philip Holland's poetry for a suggested donation of £3 for the work of RABI, please get in touch. Details will be provided at the end of the service. And don't forget, you can still order RABI's 2021 calendar and their Christmas cards. And again, details will follow at the end of the service. And I'd like to thank those that opened their farms to us, Alison and Keith Wilton and Ruth and Mark Lowe. And a big thank you finally to Robert Walker for his hard work in organising this service and bringing it together. And finally, thank you to all of you for watching. Let's finish our time together with a final prayer and blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.